Uh, I guess, uh, and I, I'm going to say one more thing. Um, last week, I was really appreciative of what Tom and the elders and what you all did uh, for Pastor Appreciation Month and Sunday. It was just uh, just overwhelming. Monica and I feel so blessed. Um, one of the things he said uh, at the tail end of the message was that, you know, when God prepares a man to be in the office, he gives him certain gifts. And then he goes, and I've given, you know, Pastor Brian, Pastor Dave, you know, just, just some energy. I want to give him a little bit of energy. And it caused me to think just a little bit uh, over the week. And, you know, and this is pretty true. And I kind of tested it. And maybe you know it, too. I'm not always super energy. That's not true. But when I start talking about God's grace and start talking about Jesus and start talking about the Bible and the truth, then you know, I get more and more animated. And I think that's part of where that energy comes from. I think the Holy Spirit is really about that. So today we've got songs of about the Lord and about God's grace. And uh, one's a new one. It's, uh, again, high energy, but it really, we're celebrating His grace today, and I, and I hope you enjoy uh, the service and give God the glory. So our first song is Great Are You, Lord. Just kind of bring us into that heart of worship, and then we'll move on to the next one.
In Bible class, uh, just, just moments ago, we were talking about uh, a little bit about sin and uh, how some uh, religions believe that uh, we are not born sinners. Maybe the desire to sin, but not actually sinners. And we were talking against some of these, uh, basically they're heresies, there's false teachings, because if you believe that, then you believe that at one time you were perfect and you can return back by doing things in this world. Uh, it just falls apart like a, a house of cards. Um, we have to know that it's because of God's grace that we are uh, loved and forgiven. So under God's grace and in, under the shadow of the cross, we know that we have an opportunity to have the righteousness of God. And so only grace speaks to that. but the devil likes to sneak in, get his foot in our doors, and cause us to doubt and fear and wonder about what it is um, that we call sin and how that impacts us. So 
We're going to get in the Word of God. We're going to be looking at uh, Romans today, Romans chapter 3. And I've broken it up in two halves. The first half uh, kind of comes to us before the prayer of the day, and it also comes before the time when we can reflect um, and confess our sins. And then we hear the second half uh, towards the time of the message. So the passage that we're going to have now is Romans uh, 3, 19 and 20. Now we know that whatever the law says, it speaks to those who are under the law, so that every mouth may be stopped and the whole world may be held accountable to God. For by works of the law, no human being will be justified in his sight, since through the law comes knowledge of sin. So every time we think of what the rules are, what God's laws are, we realize that we are sinners. Um, don't kill, which also means don't murder, don't hate, don't hurt or harm your neighbor. Don't think badly of your neighbor. All right, check that off. I'm a sinner. All right? Thou shalt not commit adultery and lead a pure and decent life. Never look at something that you shouldn't be looking at. Never think something you shouldn't be thinking. Check that off. I, I'm seeing myself as a sinner. And the list goes on and on. So when we have that idea that since it's been written on our hearts of that law, we also realize how much we're in need of forgiveness and sin. So will you pray with me? Lord God, your son Jesus Christ gave his life for ours on the cross that we now stand righteous before you by faith. Grant us to trust not in our own righteous actions, but only and always in Jesus Christ alone that we may live now forever in the peace of God, each and every day, because that peace of God surpasses my understanding. It's the one that keeps my heart in Christ Jesus. It's the ones that remind me that I'm not my own, but I've been bought with a price, the precious blood of Jesus. And as I focus on my sins, I'm also focusing on one who justifies me. And I'm also focusing on the Father who sent him, the Father who redeems him through me through the blood of his Son, Jesus. So hear me as I confess my sins and as I reflect on what your word has to say. Amen. So we have responsive reading. I'm going to go ahead and start there. By works of the law, no human being will be justified in God's sight. God is the justifier of the one who has faith in Jesus. Behold, like clay in the potter's hand, so are you in my hand. O house of Israel. Thus will you be the people that I was the soil of the Father's hand, and you were willing to another vessel, that the seeing good was the power to do. As you reshape the church at the time of Luther, reshape us in this generation, Lord, to love you with all of our hearts, and to love our neighbors as ourselves. All as a joyful response to your first loving us. And that's what we want, God, to reshape us. Um, we have this really neat communion where we're not going to be using it today, but perhaps you've seen it where it's a cracked pot. It's a, I forget the name of that uh, process. Kamachiri? Where they put gold and they fill it and they make it a beautiful vessel. I think sometimes God brings us together that way. Would you stand and let's make confession of our faith, the words of the Apostles' Creed, uh, together. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven, and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Bible tells us that all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God, but we are justified by His grace and gift through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. God calls us to confess our sins, and we are going to observe a moment of silence and personal reflection for our confession.
God, you formed us in the womb, and you shaped our lives to love and honor you and our neighbors. Yet, we are by nature sinful and separated from you. We sin against you in thoughts, words, and actions. For the sake of Jesus, who is tempted in every way as we are, and yet without sin, we pray for your forgiveness. Well, for the sake of him who became sin, who knew no sin, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God as a called and ordained servant of Christ by the command of Jesus, I forgive you all of your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Amen. Please uh, be seated. This is only because of God's grace that we have this, and this is that new song that I told you about. It's called I See Grace. I'm almost ready. Okay. I see shame. The kind that come from the states, the kind that won't go away when I turn around, they were right there to remind me. I see regret, the kind that messes with your head, the failures that you can't forget, the stand and hear now, I'm thinking God is behind me. Because I've seen nails, scarred hands, reach out and wind it all. one another with the peace and the grace of God right now as we celebrate this day. Is there a music on this one?
You know, it was really neat this morning. We had uh, uh, some visitors from Jerseyville, and uh, they wanted to take communion. Of course, uh, we talked, and, and they were from a, another Lutheran church. It's, it's neat to have the body of believers together to do just that, to uh, know that we're baptized, loved and redeemed by Christ the crucified, and we join together, we confess our faith. And when you come up here, you're doing the same thing. You're actually confessing your faith, not just receiving but you're saying to everybody, I believe that the rest of these people all around me, um, we're unified, we're one in Christ. And what a blessing that is to celebrate this day and really every day. So let us pray. Oh Lord, you freely give us what we could never attain for ourselves, a right relationship with you through the righteousness of Jesus Christ. We thank you for giving us the body of Christ to eat and the blood to, of Christ to drink your gift of grace that forgives our sins and joins us together as the body of Christ. And we all say, for all this, it is our duty and delight to thank and praise, serve and obey you. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night in which he was betrayed, he took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it, and he gave it to his disciples, and he said, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way also, he took the cup after supper, and, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This is the cup, the new covenant, the new testament in my blood, shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. As often as we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes and we say, Amen. Amen. Come, Amen. Lord Jesus. Amen. Brothers and sisters in Christ, God has been so gracious to us and loves us, even though we don't deserve it. So I ask that you would please stand as we continue with our liturgy. O oh Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, in giving us your body and blood to eat and drink, you lead us to remember and confess our entire faith. And we thank and praise you for that, the wonderful gift that we can celebrate each and every day of our lives. When we go out into the world, help us to be a beacon that shares the hope and love of Jesus and to share why we have this amazing hope that we have. As we come before you to receive the gift of life and salvation and forgiveness of sins, we ask that we would receive it all by, from you through our faith. And as we do and as we prepare, we ask that you would remember us in your kingdom now and teach us to pray the prayer you taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. As you have prepared your hearts and minds, welcome. You may be seated. <coughs>
God, Heavenly Father, King of Kings, the great I am, we come before you so thankful that you did send your one and only Son, Jesus Christ, to be born, who knew no sin to become sin for us, that we might now bear his righteousness. We thank you for the gifts of, in and with and under the very body and blood, forgiveness of sins, life, and salvation, uniting us as one as we go forth in this world. Strengthened and protected, Lord, we bear your name wherever we go. As Christ bearers, bless us in our effort. Help us to be bold where we need to be bold. We pray this in the precious name of Jesus. Amen. I don't know if there are any children for today's children's message. I don't see any. So I was all set, I man. I was I had a really cool book here. <laughs> Tell the story. Tell the story about he has a I'll just give you a little bit of a nutshell. Um, I tried to give one of the little ones at first service. What do you do if you've done something you're not supposed to do and get caught? No answer. You know, and, and, and your dad or mom says, now, what do you say? No answer. So older sister went, say you're sorry. <laughs> and I said, now, what would happen if I were to say to you, your dad would say, well, sorry's not good enough. Uh, um, you're going to have to do a thousand push-ups, a thousand sit-ups. You have to clean the bathroom every single day for the rest of your life, you know. And then maybe you get forgiven. And I and I use that story to try to give the analogy and the idea that sometimes, in a long time ago, people still find it um, a, a hole to get into where they feel they got to do something in order to earn that forgiveness and uh, and uh, more than just sorry. And receive God's grace. And that's what the children's message was in a nutshell. Um, Psalm 46 so inspired Martin Luther, who was the one we call one of the founding fathers of the Reformation, that he wrote a hymn called The Mighty Fortress. It's the God in whom we trust. And so I ask you to follow along at 657 if you'd like to see the notes, but uh, the words are up there as we sing a mighty fortress. <laughs>
God's grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father, through our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. So we started out, now we know that whatever the law says, it speaks to those who are under the law, that every mouth may be stopped and the whole world may be held accountable to God. For by works of the law, no human beings will be justified in his sight, since through the law comes knowledge of sin. But the words continue. It goes on. Die Gretchen für den Eilen aus Glaubenleben. Amen. Die Gretchen für den Eilen aus Glaubenleben. Amazing words. Fantastic words. Words that come filled with excitement and energy and a boldness. I Gretchen Vernon Island of Robin Laban. I practiced that like dozens of times so I could say it for you today. Yeah. The righteous shall live by faith alone. Powerful, powerful words. If you have your Bibles, I invite you to open up to Romans chapter 3, we already had 19 and 20, where we were made very aware that the law of God is written on man's heart, and you know when you're a sinner and when you're not. You know when you've done something wrong. The law of God works like a mirror. Every time I look into it, I see how bad I am. I wish I could look at the law and see how good I was. But I only see how many times I've violated it. What to do, what to do, what to do. Reformation is a day that we remember and celebrate that the church founded by Jesus Christ is alive. It's a living entity. Some people think it, it, it started this way and it, it never changes. For centuries, God has shaped the church and reshaped it again and again and again so that every generation can experience the gospel in a language that they understand. You hear the good news and you, you can resonate to that. And why do we talk about Reformation or Reformation Sunday observed anyway? And for that matter, why do we talk about Christmas and Easter during Christmas and Easter? I mean, we know Christmas. It was to be little Lord Jesus, you know, little away in the manger, you know, in the bed in the manger, asleep, no, no place, cattle are lowing, we got the story, we know how it worked, the star of Bethlehem, but yet we tell that story again. At Easter, we know the stone was rolled away on that third day so that we could see the tomb was empty. And we tell the story again and why? Do we get tired of that story? Not very often. And at Reformation, we hear the same story again and again. Why do we tell it? Well, perhaps we can hear it again and get, get worked up again in ourselves the appreciation for grace. Throughout the changes, God has preserved his word and his sacrament. Like the church, we are like being shaped by God, like clay, and God's the potter. And just as he created us in all things so that one day Christ will be in Christ be recreated, now we are in a process where we have to think about being restored. That Gretchen Vernon Island Oscar. Glaubenleben, by the righteousness shall live by faith alone. Yes, that, that's what I desire. That's, that's what I want. That's what I need. It's a, a necessity that I must have it. And yet we heard that you, by grace you've been saved through faith. It's not your own doing, lest anyone should boast. You're forgiven. You're a forgiven child of God, loved and redeemed by Christ the crucified. Let's walk out walking on clouds, because that's what God has done. And as soon as we walk out the door, we're smack dab in the face with the law of God and reminded of one thing, and that is, well, you know what? I, I know that God's forgiven me. I know that he loves me. I heard what the pastor said. I read what scripture says. But you know what? I still feel like I need to do a little more. <clears throat> I need to do something so that God's going to love me just a little bit more. Where do we get that thought? Where do we get that thought? I've got to do stuff. 
Well, perhaps kind of related to the would have been children's message. No, I know you're sorry, but now you've got to do things over and over again. Not that we're earning our family or our father or mother's love. No, of course they love us, but somehow we feel like we have to do something in order to be in the right graces with God because that's how the world seems to act and we just attribute our thinking the way we think on God. God gets tired of me saying again and again and again, I've done it again. Please forgive me again. He, does he say to me, are you sorry enough this time? He never says it, but I say it to myself. And so the devil, and maybe my sinful self, gets a foot in, in that proverbial door. And I ask the question, you can fill in the blank, if I do enough, I might possibly then qualify to be loved by God. Oh, do I want to be loved by God? And somehow in my psyche, he doesn't love sinners. Somehow in my mind, he, he doesn't want sinners. And somehow in my mind, it disqualifies me. And when I go down that road, and perhaps you go down it too, even after having the confession of sins, receiving the body and blood of Jesus Christ for forgiveness of sins, life and salvation, we go out of the world and, and it seems like it starts all over again. And if I buy into that, do I do enough in order to earn God's love? And I buy into that teaching, well, that can cause me nearly to the point of despair. To despair entirely. Perhaps this is what was going on in Martin Luther's day. You know, Martin Luther, he, his father had a great for, uh, potential for his son. Very smart, very intelligent. I need you to be an attorney because attorneys are looked up upon in those days. They are respected. They make a lot of money. They have a lot of pull. And to think about the influence you can have in life. I want so much more for you. This great storm comes. Martin, being a good Catholic, goes up to St. Anne. He's praying for saints at this point and says, Hey, if you spare me, God, in the name of St. Anne, then I will become a monk. And of course, we know he spares him. He becomes a monk. Turns his entire life over to becoming full-time ministry. Giving away all his stuff. All his valuables. No wife. No children. No land. No animals. Just God. Certainly now, I'm doing enough to be loved by God. And yet he found that at every turn, he went right back. He thought something he shouldn't have thought. He did something he sh shouldn't have done. He didn't do the good he's supposed to do. We confess that every Sunday. And then he hears the words from Romans 3, 23. All have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. This means you. And despair settles. Despair. Little Rebecca said to him that little, I know I'm a sinner, you don't have to tell me. What you don't hear very often from a person like Rebecca is, I know I'm forgiven and I'm fine in Jesus. Now we've got this mentality that we fall short of the glory of God. Now, if you're looking at Romans 3, 23 and 24 in your Bible, you might see something that maybe you've missed before. All have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. I think I typed it wrong on your outline. Because in Scripture, there's not a period there. There's a comma. You know, maybe you'll put a little note in your side margin. Not a period, but a comma. That's pretty important, the, the detail. There's not a period there, there's a comma. All the sin that fall short of the glory of God and are justified by his grace as a gift through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. Amen. Struck by God's word here, Luther recognized that it is Christ's work of righteousness, his dying, his rising, for sinners like Luther that saves. 
And today we celebrate what Christ has done for us and, and all sinners. It's nothing short of amazing. It's what gets me worked up. It's what gets me excited to be able to say, no, you are forgiven. This past week I've had a lot of time for introspection, just a quiet time by myself. The deer stand has a tendency to do that. And I, I wrestled with the idea, who's the worst enemy that I have? Is it Satan? Or is it my own sinful self? You know, I know where sin came from. I know the original sin, but I've got it within me. And boy, I sometimes think that I have to give the nod to myself. Satan can't put thoughts into my head. He's not omniscient. He's not omnipotent. He doesn't have that power. Where do those thoughts come from? It comes from inside. Oh, man. Oh, man. Where am I going to get salvation? Who's going to rescue me from this pit, a oh, wretched man that I am? The Gretchen Vernon Island aus Glaubenleben. You know, originally it was Die Gretchen Vernon aus Glaubenleben, not island. Alone wasn't added, and Luther added it. It's not scriptural, but it attests to scripture. You see, he argued that this gift of God, this righteousness, was something attributed to human beings rather than something human beings achieved for themselves. Christ's righteousness is not a feature of the human soul. Rather, it's something that God gives us. His dying, becoming sin, his rising, his overcoming death in the grave, this salvific work huh, of Christ that imputes I love that word. It's a word we don't use very often. Imputes its righteousness upon us. And if you haven't written any word in your outline, I want you to write those next, those last two letters. Not just us, but upon me. He imputes his righteousness upon you. He reckons you righteous. And now when he looks at you, he doesn't see what you used to be, but he sees Jesus. Easter story is Easter story. Christmas story is Christmas story. But the Reformation story, the, the aha moment of saying, it's not my sin that God sees when he sees me in Jesus. It's Jesus that God sees and his acts of righteousness. And I have his cloak of righteousness upon me. <clears throat> I trust in God's grace alone. Now, now what? Right? Congregations today have to have a now. All right, thank you. I like that news. That's great news. Isn't that good news? Karen, isn't that great news? Yeah. What do you think, Susan? Great news? Yeah, yeah. What about Lynn? Great news? Nathan? Yeah, good news. What do you do now? Well, we don't do anything. God's done it all. I hope you don't walk away thinking that because there's more to come. There it is up on the wall. Martin Luther, who opposed the idea of there's no law, it's called antinomialism, a big word, is recorded saying this. And I like this quote, but it's not in your outline. Works are necessary for salvation, but they do not cause salvation. I'm going to say it again because that's really where it's at. Works are necessary for salvation, but they do not cause salvation. For faith alone gives life. Since we are saved by faith alone, the faith that saves is never alone. There's always something that we're doing. In his instructions to the Romans, Luther said that saving faith is a living, creative, active, and powerful thing. Luther says that faith does works. Faith does stuff. And so, digression verden aus Glaubenleben, the righteous shall live by faith, makes sense now. I am righteous. I will live by my faith. This is the good news that we have in Jesus Christ, the good news that saves and revives and re revives and revitalizes each and every one of us. And so Luther 
as you saw in this picture, he goes to the church and he nails 95 theses on the wall because he wants to debate the church that said, no, 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 you can do things that are going to earn your salvation. And I found out by reading just a little bit of history that the first two theses kind of cover all of them. In fact, all 93 afterwards just kind of add up to the first two because they were all central to the first two. The first two were the idea that God intended believers to seek repentance, that faith alone and not deeds would lead to salvation. And that's what we have to remember. So by grace, we respond to God's goodness and His kindness and what we do and we say in this world. So united in Christ, we go out. And I love this slide. Freely, through redemption, which is in Christ Jesus, we go out now. And we make a difference in the world today. We use our time, our talent, and even our treasures to further the kingdom of God. I love this subject. I could talk more. But to God be the glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And now that good news. May it carry with it the peace of God which passes all understanding, keeping your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus, the life of the last Amen. Amen. So we stand. As we go to God in prayer, I have a couple prayer requests that I'm going to include. Uh, is there anybody else that might have a prayer request that maybe I didn't hear yet or see yet? They'd like to include this morning. Okay. Let us pray. Gracious God, our Heavenly Father, we thank and praise you for the gifts of life and salvation that you bestow upon us. We are founded in faith, and now we've been nourished with your word. So we offer these prayers to you. In the name of Jesus, we pray for the world and all the people. We pray for the church that continues to use its faithful freedom to faithfulness to you, to spreading the gospel of Jesus Christ. We use this time of prayer to pray for those who have been entrusted to govern our nation, our state, and even our local community. Guide them to carry out justly and mercifully all the things that they've been called to, to carry out I ask that you would be with the members of the armed forces, those that are serving over in the Israel area and, and in the Gulf, and, and those that are also serving uh, uh, Ukraine, Russia, and, and just throughout the world, Lord. There are so many places that we're serving. I pray for victims of warfare and violence. I pray for them. I even pray for our enemies, Lord, that peace would prevail and they would know that you're a Lord of all. I lift up to you those that are going through some times of suffering and loss for the families of E.J. Everly who passed away, and, and for Bruce, uh, uh, Paul Samus' brother who passed away. End of suffering is a time that we can celebrate the victory in Jesus' name, and also the end of suffering is something that we celebrate as well. I pray for those who have gone through treatment and, and uh, 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 surgeries and are needing he healing, like Paula herself, and Terry, and, and Julie Parler. I ask that you would be with those who are mourning the loss of people who have passed away. And as we will celebrate next week, Lord, help us to celebrate their victory and their witness. I pray for those who visit this church, this congregation, that they would find hospitality that bears witness to the kingdom of heaven. I pray for those who are traveling, that they would arrive safely to their destinations. I pray for our church. I pray for the ministry of clarity, the whole process that is leading and guiding this church, that you with the power of the Holy Spirit, brought these people together to put out this, this statement that they believe they are led to do. I pray for those who are going to be attending Trump or Treat. I ask that your light would shine in that situation too. And I thank you, Lord, for everyone who's gone before us, those testimonies and those witnesses that, that they have given. And Lord, I even pray for the, the gifts that we're about to present to you this morning, the gifts, the tithes, the offerings, I ask that you would bless it and bless our hearts. We are givers of those things that you first gave us. We are your faithful people, O God, and be with us, for there is a need to have a Redeemer, Lord, and you are it. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. Please be seated. We have an elder to come forward before we have our, our time of offering and gifts. We spend it. Have you ever wondered what we do with the offering each week? 
We spend it. No, seriously, we do. We spend it on buying curriculum for the children's ministry. We spend it on helping those in need through the food pantry and men and Melons fund. We spend it on ensuring we have a safe, healthy environment in which to meet each week and throughout the week. We spend it on spreading the gospel through online services, outreaches into underserved areas of our community, and discipleship. One of the things that comes to mind for me is upward sports. On the surface, it's basketball, right? But we have at halftime, we have uh, Bible readings and telling about Jesus, and as well as they each go home with their uh, Bibles at the end of it. And that, uh, without your tithes and offerings, that wouldn't be possible. You guys make that happen. So yes, we spend the money you give as your tithes and offerings. We take our responsibility seriously to be excellent stewards of the money entrusted to us. As you prepare your tithes and offerings this morning, know that we don't take them for granted. We will use the money you're offering to God to honor him, to spread the good news, and to make disciples. Let us pray. Okay, at this time you can bring your tithes and offerings up uh, before the Lord, and I'll be up here if you'd like to have some prayer time as well. You know, it's a simple thing, but it's uh, a thing I don't take for granted. I just did it. You see it almost every Sunday. I go up there, I offer these gifts to the Lord. And uh, it's truly an honor to do that. And my little whisper prayers, which may differ slightly sometimes, is, Lord, these are, these are gifts first given to us. I give them to you for the work of your kingdom. Bless them. And God does bless them. And now we conclude our service. God has remembered his steadfast love and faithfulness. Amen. Amen. By grace you have been saved through faith. Amen. Amen. And God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has given, uh, has given to us. In Christ you are blessed. Amen. Amen. Please stand for this amazing grace.
There's some flyers in the back. For women's ministry. ministry. So flyers for that for women's ministry. Make sure you get those as you leave today. God bless you. Stay safe. Stay warm. Thank you.